Hello everybody, I'm going to show how to hold the crankshaft on a EJ 2.5 Subaru engine. My book says, use a chain wrench with a belt to protect the pulley. Another method is taking a small belt from the alternator and going to the crank pulley to hold it, but hope, uh, hope that it holds the pulley from spinning. Another way is to use a wrench like a breaker ball and just crank the engine over. And uh, I don't really care for that. The, this one guy was using this torque wrench, and uh, I guess he didn't understand that a torque wrench is a precise instrument, a tool that's calibrated. And so he was using it, cranking over his engine, uh, when he should have been just using a breaker ball. The method I used last time was uh, on my friend's call, it's a manual transmission. I told him to put it on gear, hold the brake, and I loosen and tighten the uh, crank pulley bolt and it worked. But I rather not even do that because there could be a chance you could uh, mess up a gear and the transmission. So all these different methods will work. You just have to decide for yourself what's best for you. But my book, Shelton's holding the, like I said, the crank pulley with a chain wrench and a belt. As for holding the flywheel using a flywheel holding tool, which you're gonna pay money for. Okay, I got a set of pin punches. They're all too big. All too big. Okay, now that I have the right size pin punch, there's two holes on the back of the Subaru EJ 2.5. One on the uh, driver's side, one on the passenger side. I like the passenger side because the, it's much closer to the ring gear and less likely to ban you pin punch. But on this engine, it has a bracket that I had to take a bolt out. And uh, my old full Subaru didn't have that bracket with a bolt. The hole was just open on the passenger side. And it had uh, separate plugs instead of one big plug. And so. So I can crank, hold it and tighten real tight. I can, loosen. I can loosen and then I can tighten right back up.
I use my big breaker ball, putting as much force as I can, tightening. Okay, it's tight. Okay, those, those the hole on the driver's side, it's a red hole, but it's not used for anything. Notice the space here, uh, from the block to the ring gear, there's a good amount of space. I don't like using that side. I like using the passenger side. Because that hole, there it is, there's the hole right there. See how close it is? And uh, so I like to use that, but on this I had to take the bolt out. And, uh, and I didn't really need my uh, needle nose uh, vice grips. But when I changed the flywheel, loosen and tighten the bolts, I used the passenger side. I used the appropriate basically you get the idea. I put uh, this into the tooth as I use the smaller diameter because it goes deeper into the tooth of the ring gear. I use the needle nose pliers when I was tightening and loosening the flywheel because I could lock it in place and not have to worry about it uh, coming out. So it worked great for changing the clutch and flywheel. I don't know if it's going to work for automatic because the ring gear might, might not be exactly the same. But you could just, on automatic, you could just stick your pin and see if you feel the ring gear. If not, you're just not going to catch anything. Now, see that punch? It says three sixteenths. That one's a little big to go onto the flywheel teeth, the uh, ring gear teeth. Three sixteenths. Uh, three sixteenths. This, this smaller one is, has to be the size below the 3 sixteenths. I can't imagine that there will be one in between. So it's got to be the one below 3 sixteenths, but it's not saying what size it is. It's pretty small and it fits into the... Thank you, real good. Huh?